Hi guys, we're back for more of part two of the Odyssey. We are going to read this section called Argus. And I thought I would bring my dog Jack up here onto my lap to introduce you to him. We've had him for a very long time. This section, Argus, is about a dog that Odysseus owned named Argus. He owned this dog before he left for Troy. Maybe some of you guys have pets. Can you imagine what it would be like to leave your house for a very long time? If you have a dog, you know that your dog is so happy to see you when you come home. Isn't that right, buddy? You is so happy to see us when, when we come home and he just comes and greets us and he's wagging his tail and everything. And so what's your dog like? Do you have a dog or do you have a cat? Your pets, how do you treat them and how do they treat you? Um, but Argus has been still alive waiting for his master all of this time. Now, when we start this section called Argus, I want you to remember that Odysseus is all disguised as a beggar and he is bent over and haggard and old. Athena has made him look that way. And he is with his old swine herder, Eumaeus, who is taking him down to the main part of the city, to the palace, because Eumaeus thinks that he's just an innocent beggar who's come to look for some food and for a handout. And so Eumaeus is helping him. So let's read this section. It says, Odysseus, heads for town with Eumaeus, and outside the palace, Odysseus's old dog Argus is lying at rest as his long absent master approaches. While he spoke, that's Odysseus, an old hound lying near pricked up his ears and lifted his muzzle, and this was Argus, trained as a puppy by Odysseus, but never taken on a hunt before. His master had sailed for Troy. The young men afterward hunted wild goats with him and hare and deer, but he had grown old in his master's absence. Treated as rubbish, garbage now, he lay at last upon a mass of dung before the gates. Manure of cow, mules and cows piled there until field hands could spread it on the king's estate abandoned there and half destroyed with flies old argus lay but when he knew he heard odysseus's voice nearby he did his best to wag his tail nose and nose down and flattened ears and having no strength to move nearer to his master and then the man that's odysseus he looked away wiping a salt tear from his cheek, but he hid this from Eumaeus. You want to get down? Oh! And then he said, old, old, old beggar Odysseus says, I marvel that they leave this hound to lie here on the dung pile. He would have been a fine dog from the look of him, though I can't say to as to his power and speed when he was young. You find the same good build in house dogs landowners keep all for style. And you, you replied, Eumaeus, because this is Odysseus telling the story. A hunter owned him, but the man is dead. Eumaeus thinks his master is dead. In some far place. If this old hound could show the form he had when o Lord Odysseus left him going to Troy, you'd see him swift and strong. He never shrank from any savage thing he'd brought to bay in the deep woods on the scent. No other dogs kept up with him. Now misery has him here in leash. His owner died abroad, and here the women slaves will take no care of him. You know how servants are without a master. They will have no will to labor or excel. For Zeus, who views the wide world, takes away half the manhood of a man. That day he goes into captivity and slavery. Eumaeus crossed the court and went straight forward into the Megaron that says on the right, a great central hall of the house, usually containing the hearth. He goes into the Megaron among the suitors, but death and darkness in that instant closed the eyes of Argus, who had seen his master Odysseus after 20 years. So that's a very sad, a tragic part that his dog had been waiting all that time to see his master return. But as soon as he heard his master, he wags his tail to be recognized and then he passes away. So that's it for that section.